Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Miss Truss had made history. She has made history for serving the shortest tenure as Prime Minister in Britain. Just it was for 45 days when she was appointed as the Prime Minister by the Queen at Balmoral on September 6th. This was something that everybody predicted. Let us move ahead and talk about the various topics that we are going to discuss from the perspective of GS Mains paper second and of course from the perspective of your prelims examination not much is important but facts certainly you have to understand to write any answer. So moving ahead if we talk about the news piece we have taken it from the Indian Express but we have also plugged the gaps from various other authentic newspapers. Moving ahead first of all let us talk about the background of Liz Truss. She was appointed by the Queen at Balmoral as the Prime Minister of Britain on September 6th. Three days later, she died. The Queen died. So, a former Liberal Democrat activist, Liz Truss is. And she was not a household name when she became the PM. Not many people knew about her. She, uh, like Boris Johnson was a household name. It wasn't the case with Liz Truss. And of course, she holds the record of serving as the Prime Minister of Britain for the shortest tenure. When her election came into being in the summer times, Tories, which the Conservatives are known as, the Conservatives wanted somebody like her when they ousted Boris Johnson. So she said that she will going to implement fundamental conservative values such as cutting taxes. So these were cutting off the taxation on corporates and the super rich and also shrinking the state. That means market intervention by the government wouldn't be much as well as her mini budget did something like this but that was causing the chain of events that has finally resulted in her decline. Moving ahead, let's talk about her meeting with the Queen and when she was appointed by the Queen at Balmoral on September Sixth, it was historical because she has also become the last Prime Minister to be appointed by the Queen. Okay, so remember all this. The last PM appointed by the Queen, Liz won the Conservative Party leadership on her values, the Conservative values that she wanted to implement. And she was running against former Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who is being bet upon to be the successor of Liz Truss. Boris Johnson was the previous Prime Minister who was also forced to resign in July 2022. Now we have seen that Conservative Party has become very well versed with regicide. So this was something everybody thought would happen. Before her, George Canning held the record of serving as the shortest Prime Minister, uh, tenure of Prime Minister for 119 days in 1827. And then he died because of that. He wasn't forced to resign. Moving ahead, let us talk about other important background factors that we have to see. Now, what happened when she came into power, Liz Truss was wanting to strengthen the British economy, saying that we will cut taxes and at the same time we will rampage our spending. But Rishi Sunak said that this is a recipe for disaster. Why? Because if you are going to cut taxes, where will you get your revenue from? And if you're going to spend a lot and you have already cut taxes, how are you going to spend? By borrowing. Who will lend you money in this case when inflation in Britain is at an all-time high? So this was predicted by Rishi Sunak. Ultimately, Liz has lost the fate because of her mini-budget. We will talk about that. But remember, because of mini-budget that was presented on 23rd September, she has lost the fate of her party members and fellow MPs. And that resulted in the sacking of Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, who presented the budget. He was her longtime friend. Then what happened? The next general election is not due to take place until the end of 2024. That means we need a party leader for conservatives and election for that will be held. The party leader will be the prime minister for the remaining term. Now, let's look at the reasons why she was forced to resign. First is, of course, the mini budget. What was her original plan? Let's understand that. She said, that she will revive growth through widespread tax cuts, not taxing the super rich and corporate tax will also be cut. 
and she will provide energy price guarantees against rampaging inflation. But what has happened? After a point of time, she realized that it is not possible. She, when she brought out the mini budget, it wasn't possible for the government to have that amount of money to invest and provide price guarantees. Again, at the time of Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine war, we are seeing prices of gas going high. So how is that possible? Other than that, if you're going to cut taxes, you won't have revenue. Then what happened? She had a U-turn from here. On September 23rd, Kwasi Kwarten presented this ramped up spending while also cutting tax revenue. But there is nothing you can do to ramp up your spending because you do not have money. UK is grappling with all-time high inflation. Moving ahead, then comes the market reaction. When she presented, when this mini budget was presented, it spooked the market. So market started reflecting the sentiments of the people. What happened because of this particular mini budget? Investors started selling all possible UK assets. Why? Because they knew that if they are going to buy UK assets, the government won't be able to pay them back for it. So they started selling it. If you do not have revenue from taxes, how you are going to pay it, pay for these assets. And because of that, the pound sterling fell to historic low against US dollar. When that happened, it is imported inflation because when you are going to import something, you have to pay more from your forex, forex reserves. And again, you will be in a vicious cycle of debt. Who will lend you? Investors are unwilling to lend money to the UK for the same reason. And investors are unwilling to lend money to the UK government. They are selling the government bonds or what do we know as gills. Okay. So gills are basically government bonds that we have to understand from this perspective. You are lending to the government by buying gills. Okay. But if you sell them all, you are showing that we won't lend money to you. Why? You won't be able to pay back for what you have sold to us. So they started doing it. And because of the price, uh, because of the selling of the gills, the price of the gills came down. But the yield on gilt, the yield on gilt, which is the effective interest rate charged by the market for lending, it has shot up, it skyrocketed. And when that skyrocketed, the Bank of Finland had to step in to stop a financial collapse. So this is the overall situation. And this was a chain reaction. When the prices of gilt started coming down, not much demand was there of gilt. Nobody wanted to buy government bonds. So the price started going down. But the yields, they skyrocketed. The interest rate, effective interest rate, which is charged by the market on lending has increased and that caused a crisis in pension funds and mortgage rates because several pension fund managers they had hedged against the interest rate going up sharply but after a time being they saw that they are on the wrong side of the bet as well as gilt which was the asset they have started losing price and then there comes genuine doubt over the viability of the pension funds how will be pension funds maintained uh, then moving ahead, if we talk about the market interest rate, when market interest rates have gone up, people who are paying mortgage, they will also be impacted. So what happened that people who want to buy new houses as the interest rates have gone up, they might not borrow loan from the from the banks. And those who have already done that have to get more loans to pay for their earlier mortgage. So this has also become a very vicious situation. Now. Prospective owners, as I have already told you, might not, you know, buy houses and those who have already bought, got home loans have to enter into more loan agreements to service their previous debt. So, the opposition Labour Party are going door to door and telling them that this mortgage issue has been caused by flawed trustnomics by the name of Liz Trust. Her economics was not good enough. Moving ahead, if we talk about her ideas. U-turn after U-turn, she saw. When she said, when she saw that her previous mini budget, her previous uh, policies with respect to mini budget are backfiring, she started revising her ideas, such as reducing the taxes on the super rich. She said, "No, we will tax them, and then we will finance the ramping up of the spending in the in the polity." But what happens after that? Comes the question of 
morality, ethics, if she had already thought that she would do so, why did she sack Kuarteng? And if she has done it already, why should she remain in office? That is why she was drove away. Now we have to understand about India-UK free trade agreement, which is in the pipeline, but is Mrs. Resignation going to impact it? Let us see that. Proposed talks on free trade agreement is well on track according to Indian officials because there has been a lot of buzz around it not being viable. But India has to wait and watch because of the ongoing political issues that are already derailing the economy. Politicians and businesses across the board in the UK recognize that it is very important for them to do with FTA with India. After the Brexit, it has become imperative for a country, for a country like UK to engage financially with India. And it should be fair, equitable, balanced and must be a win-win for both sides. It's not like you lose and I lose or I win or you lose or you lose or I win like that. It shouldn't be like that. Okay. But FTAs with UK, Canada and European Union are well on track and they might be announced soon. But the government is in a wait and watch approach. FTA with India goes back to the time of Boris Johnson in January 22, 2022 when it all started, formal talks of it. And it was expedited during the April 2022 visit of Boris Johnson. And Truss, who was also the foreign trade minister, batted. She batted for a strong support with India with respect to business and saying that both countries are at a very sweet spot with respect to FTA. And she, of course, supported it. In last year, May, she signed off India-UK Enhanced Trade Partnership on behalf of the Johnson government. Financial services, legal services, digital data, digital and return goods and agriculture are some of the aspects of this free trade agreement. And during her presidential campaign also, she mentioned that by the end of the year, she would sign off the FTA pact, which of course would not happen now. Moving ahead, let's talk about what happens next. A leadership election, it will be completed within the next week. Vishy Sunan is the most, uh, you can say, touted for candidate for this particular election, the successor of Liz Truss. He was a former finance minister. He has been charged with certain allegations because of some people, some MPs over there say, because of his resignation from the Boris Johnson government, the entire rebellion started. So there might be some sort of loyalty with those MPs for Boris Johnson. So their votes might not be in favor of Rishi Sunak. He lost out in a vote involving some 1,70,000 party members and betting exchange Betfair has put Sunak on his favorites or the, as the favorite to replace Truss. So he is the most potential candidate we could see. Then comes Penny Mordaunt. She is the former defense secretary. When the entire, uh, you can say, debacle was uh, around the mini budget, she, uh, Liz Truss, turned to her to set things right. She was a passionate supporter of leaving the European Union, Penny uh, Mordaunt, and she missed out on the final two-place runoff when she was, this year itself, she was running for the candidature of the Prime Minister. She couldn't make it to the final two places which was of course between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. She defended the government even as it reversed most, most of its policies. And one lawmaker has described her as having broad appeal. That means she can make friends in all sorts of tribes. So she is particularly popular in with the MPs in Britain. Moving ahead, let's talk about Jeremy Hunt. He is the former health and foreign minister. Some conservatives also take him as the real prime minister. He entered two previous races to become the Prime Minister also in 2019 against Boris Johnson and later on he got defeated by him. He doesn't have the obvious support of a large group of lawmakers in the parliament but he's still in the race. Ben Wallace, he is Britain's Defence Secretary. He is the one who is leading Britain's response in the Russia-Ukraine war. He's quite content with his job so he does not want to be be the next Prime Minister of Britain, but he's popular with party members. He's also a former soldier. Then Boris Johnson, household name in Britain, former Prime Minister. He caused a lot of problems for David Cameron and Margaret Thatcher. So he became the London Mayor in 2008, Prime Minister in 2019. And that was landslide with landslide majority. He was the face of the Brexit vote. 
he won votes for even from those who couldn't who would not support conservative party and a string of scandals such as corruption as well as party gate scandal led led many of record number of his party mates to resign and that caused his downfall moving ahead he is also on the list by the way so what happens next we have also thought about certain other prime ministers with respect to britain in the last 6 years britain has seen five prime ministers david cameron resigned after the result of the 2016 brexit referendum he was pm for 6 years and 64 days theresa may she was she resigned in july 2019 she was in power for 3 years almost a uh, more than 3 years she was unable to pass her brexit withdrawal agreement boris johnson he was ousted as well uh, as uh, resigned as in he resigned on july 7th 2022 now let's look at the question critically analyze the economic scenario of the uk at the backdrop of the recent political instability in 250 words okay so that's it thank you so much for watching and stay engaged